computer. Done. All right. Um, so yeah, no worries. I'm happy to happy to send this through to you um, at the end. If I could just have everybody's email addresses, that would be awesome. Um, all right. So hello, welcome. Um, this is me. And um, I'm going to teach you how to get fast and free results from Facebook and Instagram. Now, this is my jam, meaning that um, people will call me, you know, the guru of fast and free um, and not just my partner who's from New Zealand. Um, <laughs> but they will she, he, uh, uh, I will show you how to get fast and free results from Facebook and Instagram. I'll share my story with you and you'll see why you don't actually have to pay for ads and you do not actually have to outsource. All you've got to do is get your vehicles working correctly and have a strategy. All right, so firstly, why did I choose Facebook? Well, I'm going to give you some stats. 93% of small businesses prefer Facebook because it's more fun, entertaining, and engaging. There's actually, it's 3.2 billion monthly active users now and 1.84 billion daily active users on Facebook. Facebook leads the other social media platforms by reaching 59% of social media users. 200 million small, business, small businesses around the world use Facebook. 98.3% of Facebook users access it on their mobile devices, um, which is really, really imperative in your industries. The average user is on Facebook 19.5% hours each month. 78% of people look and buy products on Facebook and people check Facebook eight a minimum of eight times per day. So think about you. How many times per day do you actually check Facebook? Um, and men is actually probably a little bit less. Um, but the average is eight minutes per day. So Facebook can be an effective way to market and grow your business, and it can only be done if you use it efficiently. So this is my key mantra, and that is skills plus strategies plus systems equals simple success, okay? Which also means not spending your life online. It also means not being overwhelmed. It also means not just being visible, but actually generating leads, inquiries, and clients, and the right ones. So this is uh, my daughter. So the birthday girl today that I was talking about is actually my baby over there. And Hannah's turning 15. Yes, she still gets balloons. Um, so this is us when she when we moved from South Africa 13 years ago. My identical twin girls, Erin on the left, Jordan on the right, Hannah in the middle. They were four years old. My youngest was one. Okay. Um, so it's actually not 13 years then. It must be 14 years now, 14 years ago. Oh, I need to update my slides. So 14 years ago, I moved here. Now, the thing is, in South Africa, where I grew up, everybody knew me. All my family were there. Everyone knew who I was. They all knew my story. You know, you can get connections. You can ask for support and help. Uh, you know, you, I, I had money. I had paid off houses, paid off cars, um, a successful business. And all of a sudden, we gave all of that up and we came to, um, came to Australia. Very excited, but we sold everything. Came here, had no money. Completely non-techy. I'm hyperactive. I have no marketing experience whatsoever. And at that stage, the social media platforms were very, 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 very new. Okay. And on the Gold Coast, I knew no one, absolutely no one. I had no marketing budget. My husband at the time, uh, he lost his job twice in the first four years. And because we we're paying our way into the country still, we had no Centrelink, no welfare, no financial support. And I basically had to start a business and get clients so that I could actually feed my family. Like that's the level that I was at. So I was feeling really stressed. I was feeling really hopeless. Um, and I needed what I, what I was doing to work. I didn't have time with three kids under the age of five to be fluffing around online and not getting results. I just had to have it work. It could not work. So I started playing around on Facebook. And I built myself a six-figure business within five years, okay, with no paid advertising at all, um, which has allowed me to play. And this is why I always say I'm a player, because I really do believe that if you're productive and you're profitable, you can play more. So this is me with my dog. He's a rescue dog. His name's Ziggy. Um, he's a cross lab. I call him a who's your daddy. Uh, my partner, he's from New Zealand. Uh, I met him on Tinder and a lot of my strategies I learned on Tinder. So I have written a blog on that as well. So if any of you on Tinder, I can help you with that too. Um, and we've been together now for seven years. But I hate being online. So when you, like my, the name of my company is Online Business Marketing. 
and I hate being online. So if I can find a free and fast way to do things where I'm not online and I can spend more time doing this stuff, I will find that way and that's what I teach. And I'm going to share that with you today. So here are my daughters now. Um, Jordan's on the left, Erin's on the right. Uh, my dad always says you've got 50% chance of getting it right. Um, and Hannah is in the middle there. And then that is Ziggy over there on the left. And then that's our, I call him my part-time dog, my step dog who comes fortnightly with the children, uh, Milo. Um, so why is this different and why what I'm teaching is different? Well, firstly, I've been there and I've done that. And I'm more interested in making money than friends. And I know that that's a bit harsh, but a lot of marketers talk in big jargon. Um, they teach you the same strategies across the board. They don't personalize things and they don't look at the actual business infrastructure or what you're hoping to achieve. Um, whereas I'm very passionate about that. There are better ways to do things than live online. And I spend a quarter of my year, um, quarter of my, my year traveling and camping and doing amazing things. Um, and there's the hard way and there's the smart way. So I'm going to show you the smart way to do things. So in business, so I did things backwards. I fell into it, completely taught myself how to do this. Um, and then I went and got a diploma in social media marketing. So I do have a diploma in social media marketing. I went and got my Cert 3 in business. Um, I am a member of the Active and Healthy Gold Coast Alliance. I'm also a member of the Master Plumbers Association. And I'm a member of Rotary um, uh, Rabina Club as well. But I have gone on to be nominated top 10 business strategists in Australia 21, nominated top 20 social media coaches in 22. As I said, diploma in social media marketing. I've helped over a thousand business owners worldwide to get income producing results. I am an international award winning strategist. So um, I have been recognized internationally. I've also been featured across all these other places, including um, TV. And the reason I've been featured is for my out of the box marketing, education and innovation. And education is important for me because I am passionate about empowering business owners so that they can do things successfully. And my strategies apply to both startups through to big business. I'm also an Amazon book author, podcast guest speaker and blog. All right. So I think I know a little bit about this <laughs> and I've gone and achieved it for myself and I've helped others achieve it too. So let's go into Facebook. We are looking at Facebook and um, it all starts with, um, sorry, that's my daughter going, yes, good, good, good job, babe. Um, starts with your personal profile. So often people will say when it comes to Facebook, I don't want my personal profile. I don't want anybody to see my personal profile. I don't want anyone to find my personal profile. I just want my business page. I want you on, to understand that the platforms all work, actually many of them I think all of them work this way, is that you have to have a personal profile and then you have to set up a business profile, okay? That's how they work. But what many people don't know is that your personal profile is can be private and you can make certain parts of it public, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you that today as well. Um, so you still have to have that personal profile, but if you don't want that personal profile um if you don't want to be found personally on Facebook, it's okay. Like I work with people that have been involved in domestic violence, lawyers, psychologists, all different industries, and you can still have that personal profile and keep it private, okay? And have all your business stuff public. Now, I tell you this because when you understand your privacy settings, it gives you some confidence in being able to move around on social media, knowing exactly what people can see or can't see. I will tell you that if you do decide for your personal profile to be super private, it does cut off an arm a little bit because some groups on Facebook don't allow you to engage in the group and um, as the page that only allow you to engage in the group as the personal profile. So then you might say to me, well, can I set up a fake personal profile? The, yes, you can. The, the short answer is yes. The difficult part about that is that Facebook's AI, artificial intelligence, is getting better at picking up. It's getting better at picking up the fact that you have um, that you have set up two profiles on two devices. That's the next door neighbor's Harley coming home from his bike ride. Um, so they, so they, yes, you can. But if Facebook picks up, you've got two personal profiles, and if you've got a virtual assistant who's managing it, 
they may just at some point go, eh, eh, there's fu funny activity happening and they may delete all your profiles. So there is a risk. Yes, you can. There is a risk. I always just say, set up a personal profile, keep your personal stuff private, keep your business stuff public. That's my recommendation. I will show you how to do that. So when we're setting up our personal profile, this is all the stuff you can do, okay? And I'm curious to know whether or not you know all these things. But firstly, your personal profile, you can have up to 5,000 friends only. So many coaches will tell you just to add everyone as a friend, and that is not true, okay? You should only be um, adding the right people, which really are your referral partners. They're not really your competitors. They would be your favorite clients, repeat clients, and they would be your referral partners because you're limited to 5,000, but you also want to train the algorithm to connect you with more people like those people, okay? Now, you have a little bio, um, which is 120 units that comes up first underneath your Facebook profile. That little bio, it's only 120 units. If you want your personal profile to be private and you don't want people sending you friend requests because you're going to say no, Literally just say to them, this is the private account of Michael. Please, can you connect with me on my business page and put your business page link on there? It is a clickable link. You can also put your website link in there as well. Your bio is public. Unless you've made your entire profile 100% private. Okay. The next thing is your contact details. You can put all your contact details into your personal profile. Now, you can set it up that only your friends that you accept onto your profile can see that information or you can have it as public. Now, I don't really like people putting their home address. And again, maybe that's the South African in me. I don't really like you putting your home address in there. So no one needs to know that. If they need to know that, they can message you, right? And you'll give them your details. So like your mother should know where you live and your kids should know where you live. In fact, you're probably trying to kick them out. Um, so... What you want to end up doing is make understanding that when you see the little person, it means only people on my friends list can see it. When it's the little world, it means the public can see it. It means they do not have to be your friend and they can see it. So you could put your business location details on there because they public anyway, make that public. If your mobile number is on your business card, if it is on your website, it is public. So you might as well have it on there and have it as public. You can put your business details in there as well. So you can put your website on there and make sure that it turns into a hyperlink. Many people, when they're setting it up, don't set it up correctly. So it's not actually a hyperlink. A hyperlink means if I click on it, it's going to actually take you to that location. So test your links and make sure they are actually working and taking you to the right place. You want to put in all your other uh, platforms like LinkedIn, Instagram, your YouTube channel, if you have it. Uh, your website, you want to make sure that you have filled all of that out. And again, I want my business stuff to be public. So I allow all of that to be public because if someone else is searching for me, they're not going to see me pole dancing on Saturday night because I've marked that as private or to friends only, but they can still see all my business details. Your digital links, which I spoke about, those URLs. You then also have a section which is called featured photos. So you can actually put, you know, featured photos. Now, this is your personal profile. So it's good to have you and the miso and the dog and, you know, your kids, if you're comfortable with your kids. I only put my kids on there when they were older um, and they understood social media privacy. Um, also, I always say only show si their side of their face and actually never take photos of your kids in school uniform and never take photos of the front of your house with the number and never your license plate number. So that's just some of the sort of things that I, especially with small kids, I don't, I, don't, I kind of teach. Um, but there's a featured photo section. So you can have pictures of, you know, your deck, but then the miso and the dog. And it is your personal setting. Remember, it is social media, it is social. So it wants to feel like you. You want people to choose you based on uh, the relationship they have with you as well. Pinned posts. So in your personal profile, many people don't know, but you can actually have a pinned post. So when you create a post, the top right-hand corner, there's three little dots. Let me tell you something here. Just put three little dots on your piece of paper. If you see three little dots, touch them because they open up a world of opportunities. And so many people don't touch the three little dots because I don't know, they think they're going to delete their profile. It's going to blow up. But the three little dots will always open up extra features for you. 
So when you do a post on your personal profile, the three little dots at the top, you can pin that post to the top. So you might say, hey, friends and family, because you're talking on your personal profile, great to connect with you over here. Um, if you know anybody who is um, looking for plastering in this region, plasterboard in the region, I'm just going to share all my links here, in, uh, quick links so that you can find them. Um, and here they are. So that whenever they come to your personal profile, there is sort of a welcome message on your personal profile with all your quick links. And that stays at the top. You can do that on your business page, but it is a new feature on your personal profile now too. Your relationship status. So if you want to reduce the chances of you being hit on, um, you may want to put yourself that you are in a relationship or you are married and you may wish to put that as public. It's going to reduce your chances. It's not going to completely stop your chances. Um, and you can actually now mention the person or not mention the person. When you mention the person, it means people now have access to their profile. So, for example, my partner, um, mine says I'm in a relationship with Sandy Prater. It now clicks to his profile. He has a private profile, but all my connections are trying to friend him all the time because they kind of think he's also in business, which he isn't. Oh, he is, but he doesn't own his own business. So um, so just letting you know, I just like people to know that so that whoever, if you do link to them, it just means they're going to get more friend requests. You just need to have that discussion. Another thing as well is that if you do go and decide to make that public and it's new, um, it will create it as a post on your page and everyone will say congratulations for getting married. Um, even though it was 10 years ago. I once had a client who was actually married to somebody else for five years and they still had their relationship sta status as married to their ex-wife of 10 years ago. Um, that was an interesting one to sort out on Facebook. So when last did you check your personal profile? <laughs> your location, very important. If you service a particular location, like put that location in because you are more likely, uh, and I'll explain the algorithm later, but when you have your location, and especially for location businesses, people can go, that is authentic, that is genuine. Family members. Now, I don't like this in Facebook. It's called family members. Everyone goes and adds all their family members in. I don't like that because say Bill goes and does, I don't know, electrical job and um, the wiring was crap to start off in the first place. And there ends up being an electric fire after he's been there, which hopefully will never happen. Um, and they basically go in and they they go into Bill's profile and see that Bill in the in family members, his auntie's there, his uncle's there, his grandmother's there, and now they've got access to go and troll them. So I, again, wiggle your curse on the right-hand side. Three dots will come up. Remove your family members. You know who they are. We don't need uh, people having access to that. Life events is pretty cool. If you featured in a newspaper, in an article, you presented for an award, um, in the about section on your personal profile, there's a thing called life events and you can go put those in there. So it becomes like a catalog of all the special things that you have done. You can check in on your personal profile, remembering that people now know exactly where you are. So please don't check in at home. Um, you can create reels on your personal Facebook profile as well. And obviously on your business page too, understanding there is a difference between your personal and business profile. And if you do reels on your personal profile, that's going to get you more friend requests. If you do reels on your business page, that'll get you more business uh, followers. Some people don't know there's a difference. Uh, you can run events on your personal profile. That would be if, um, if you were doing a, um, a cocktail party on a Saturday night with your mates, it would be an event then with your friends. And again, you would keep that private. So only people you share it with would see it or you're going to end up having the whole of the world attending. Privacy settings. I have spoken about that, but every single part of the setup, you can decide if only your friends see it or if your public sees it. Um, so go in and check, is it a face, which is friends? Is it the world, which is everyone? And make sure that every um, everything is set up correctly. Now, at the top right-hand side of your personal profile, uh, there's a little, um, the gray settings button, which is like a little wheel. And in there, you can set up your tag review. Um, so the, this again is for your personal profile. Now, this one's pretty good. So say, for example, um, Josh is doing uh, burpees at the gym. His personal trainer it takes a photo of him, literally like from the, from the butt side forward. 
um, and his personal trainer goes and puts it up on Facebook and goes, check out Josh doing burpees at the gym. Josh will get a notification to say, hey, um, your trainer has tagged you in this. You can, again, remove the tag and then contact your trainer and say, dude, I don't like that picture. Can you take it down? So removing the tag just takes away your name from it. It doesn't actually remove the image. So make sure that you turn on your tag review and that you go in and you check it. Messenger, obviously you can message people. Um, Facebook stories, again, Facebook stories on your personal profile, Facebook stories on your business page. Profile preferences, again, so that would be your settings, going through your settings and understanding how public or private it is. In the about section, you can also set up your uh, favorite quotes. Uh, just to give you an example, I had a, a lady I was working with who does um, bridal hair and makeup. She goes to the um, to the wedding and does the hair and makeup. She's got a massive business with about 20 people on her books uh, who work for her. And her favorite quote was, I effing hate people, all effing people suck. All right. And she set that up, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years when she was having a bad day. Can you imagine if somebody's checking her profile and goes, I don't want this negative energy coming to my wedding. Thank you very much. So you may wish to go and check your favorite quote. Um, and then details about you. So when you write your details about you, this is your personal profile. Your personal profile is about you, but what you do in your business is also part of you. So I usually recommend three to five sentences about you, the person. I love my wife. I love the dog. I love carpooling. I love skiing. I love, you know, pasta. Just a little bit about you. You know, I grew up here. I'm from there. I've done this. And then the next paragraph would be, this is my business, why I do what I do, why I love what I do. Um, and then again, just your website at the bottom of it. So it's the same as dating. So again, it's it's like my Tinder coaching that I do. It's exactly the same where you go, when you go in, you just don't go straight in for the kill. It's, hey, this is a little bit about me personally. Then you go into the deep, the other stuff, okay? It's conversational. You can put your birthday in there. You can also hide your year of birth. Um, but it is nice because people can actually wish you on your birthday. So it does increase your algorithm. So um, I have a competition with my partner and we see how many people wish us on our birthday and who wins. So um, yeah, it's normally around 200. I think uh, I get on the day. So it makes it lifts your whole algorithm up, which is pretty cool. So it's nice to display your birthday. So as I mentioned with your personal profile, it's personal. Well, your business is about your business. Now, where people go wrong with their business page is they never post themselves in their business page. Now, I do understand if there are privacy issues or if you're not the face of your business or own a franchise. I get it. But there has to be people on your business page, even if it's the back of a head. Um, there have to be people on there because it is social media, social media, social. So if you've just got pretty pretty decks no people it is going to be very cold and you're not going to get engagement and you're not going to get people engaging i'll give an example about a solar company in tasmania that i work with solar is not sexy right um and we're like well you know solar panels you're going to show, show pictures of solar panels on a roof they're not sexy they don't look good no one's ever going to engage on them and what we worked out is is that their team are actually sexy so we were like, well, we need to just show pictures of the workers putting up the solar panels or walking up the ladder or pushing the, you know, carrying things or lifting things because they were all these young, athletic looking, decent looking guys. And I'm like, well, if they're okay, let's get them involved in your branding. And, and what we would do is feature a staff profile each week. The user generated content, content became insane. And suddenly the solar panel went from being non-sexy to sexy and reaching a wider audience. So I'm not, I'm not saying you have to make it sexy, but you certainly have to make your, your profiles something that some body would want to engage in. You do have to have some sort of creative, creative thing behind it. All right. So with your business page, it is public. Everyone can see everything on it. There's no way around it. If someone has liked your page, you can block them though, but they have to have liked your page in order to be able to block them. So these people on your business page are called fans or followers and they are unlimited. Uh, you can have your review tab now hidden or not hidden. So, so many people don't realize that. 
but you can go in and say um, Michael, I don't know, Michael has upset somebody or he's working with a cray cray person. And, you know, he says, look, I can't work with you. I can't help you with you because he's, this guy's just being difficult. And this guy um, has really given you a hard time on the day, literally go into your Facebook and turn the review tab off for a couple of days until he maybe cools down because you can't do that on Google, but you can do that on Facebook. Um, and you can turn the tab back off and then turn it back on again, which is awesome. So um, you've got a contact button. Now, so many people have got the WhatsApp contact, content, contact button set up on their Facebook business page. All right. So if you go to your business page, you will see underneath the banner on the right hand side, you'll have message. And then some of you may have another button. Many of you may have WhatsApp. Some of you may have call now. Some may have learned more, which takes you to the website. If you have WhatsApp, I highly recommend that you remove it. In Australia, we don't have people contacting you for your services through WhatsApp. In, Australia, in South Africa, yes, everybody does business through WhatsApp. They don't like to use Facebook. But here in Australia, people usually for your services will be calling or contacting you through the website. So make sure that you've got the right contact, contact button. Now, if you only have the message button, you still have another button there available. You just haven't set it up. So I recommend that you do that. Um, and do need to say this, when you're making big changes to your profiles, it is better to do it on a desktop. Physical address, obviously not in your home address, um, but you can also just put in the location. You have page stories. So stories are basically little snaps. Facebook tried to buy Snapchat a couple of times, actually. I think it was around four times. Snapchat said no. Uh, so Facebook went, okay, well, we'll create our own Snapchat. And they created stories. So they only last for 24 hours. They go into the little profile circles. Oh, hey, Google, stop. Every now and then my Google starts talking to me. It's either Google or Siri. Um, they listen better than my kids do, <laughs> Google and Siri. Um, yeah, so with the stories, it's literally a little snap. So, hey, I'm in the this area tomorrow and I have had a cancellation and um, if you're needing anything done at 1 p.m., I'm in this location, p.m., because they only last for 24 hours and they literally are little snaps, little shout-outs. So um, they're very good for that, but remembering that they do go in 24 hours. You've got reels, again, uh, your video reels. They're not as popular on Facebook, but they are very popular on Instagram. In fact, they're the most popular on Instagram. You are governed by response rate. So for example, I worked with a mechanic who had a 118 day response rate, meaning that if anybody went into Facebook and, and was broken down on the side of the road and went to Facebook and said, I'm looking for a mechanic, Facebook wouldn't show them over somebody else who had a quicker response rate. So you need to ensure that your response rate is high. Uh, you have three search categories uh, when you set up your business page. And the first one is the most important one. Okay. The first one is the one that is shown. So if you choose three, make sure the first one is the closest one to what you actually do. And it's what people would search in order to find you. Uh, you have an about section and an additional information section. And it is imperative that you go and you set that up. There's an event section. You There is a services section. So set up your service section and set up your shop. So if you sell physical products, you can set up a Facebook shop, which will be done through the Meta Business account. There's an office tab as well. So you can go, hey, listen, I'm doing an offer. But to tell you the truth, Facebook's only done it because they want to say to you, put money behind it. Um, and there's no evidence to support that putting money behind offers or boosts actually works in my experience. I'm... I am now uh, seven years in this business and I'm still ad-free. Uh, there's a community tab as well. So when you engage in groups um, and people tag or share you, it can be collected in that community tab. There's a links to group ta groups tag. So you can connect your Facebook groups to your page so people can find them. There's an inbox. So make sure you check it. And there's a messaging response. So an auto response. So you don't need a bot. Facebook and Instagram actually have an auto response bot. So you can say, 
hey, thanks for connecting here. Um, sorry, my hands are busy building a deck right now, but Mary's waiting at reception for you to answer your call. So you can set up that order response because one of my fundamentals is get them the hell off Facebook and Instagram as soon as possible. We don't want them messaging you on Facebook. We want to take them to where you are handling your inquiries, which would normally be, you know, the, your, your reception or your website or your contact us form, wherever the step is for them. That's what, that's what, hey, listen, I'm really busy right now. Your call's important to me, but fill out this contact us form. We'll get back to you straight away. Page roles, meaning that you can add administrators to the page. Remembering that if they're an admin, they've got the same rights as you. And you can do paid ads and boosts. Um, however, if it's not working without paying for ads, it's not going to work when you do pay for ads. Uh, you your page can be tagged. Really important to know what your page tag is. You can schedule on your page by using publishing tools or create a studio. So many people will go and use Hootsuite or you can use Canva or you can use all these other platforms. They're third-party providers. The platforms like you to use their platforms. So in publishing tools or create a studio, you can actually schedule to Facebook and Instagram. It is their platform. They will rank you higher by using their platform. So if you are, get your VAs to, um, to use that platform. And it has the pinned post again. So welcome to my page. Put in a welcome video. This is how. This is what we do. These are our services. This is where we, we want you to contact us. All right. So before I go into groups, I might just ask you and just unmute, say your name, and then um, say what it is. What was your biggest thing that you learned right now? Or biggest thing you have to fix and implement right now? Because I really want you to take action. Um, for myself, it would be the way I present myself on both my pro personal and my business uh, social media presence. Excellent, Bill. So um, personal branding and business branding. So when it comes to the business, so many people don't focus enough that they do have to have a personal brand. Now, your personal brand can be that you are an introvert that you'd never have pictures of yourself. You only ever show sunsets, your dog and cups of coffee or wine. And that can be your personal profile, but you do need to have a personal branding of some sort so that people can say, we have the same values, we can connect. Dogs work well, coffee works well, wine works well, okay? Um, but you do have to work out what your personal brand is and have some sort of element of it. So there's consistency in that because it is social media. Michael? Um, yeah, look, just with the type of work that I do at the moment, um, with the builders that I get, like I, I deal with mainly the recruitment builders. Um, so that one job might give me 100 houses or something like that. So it's very corporate where I'm at. Yeah. So like as I was talking to Daniel, Daniel earlier and what I've, in the past, I've been just mainly doing LinkedIn, uh, more of a trusted advisory type thing. Um, but the biggest thing I've heard too, like the the the, the welcoming video, I think it's like particularly on LinkedIn. Um, even it's attached because I'm and I've got a bit of history. Got to, I'm changing over my name to a different company soon, so I've got a whole new company we started. But just that welcome video, particularly on LinkedIn, um, in both my new company and my personal branding, I think that's going to be that's that's a game changer because. And there's no videos on LinkedIn like to, to tell you who you are and what you're all about. Yeah, 100%. And people love to connect with that. And I will be talking about, um, I do have a whole slide on video marketing as well. So yeah, yeah. that's that's absolutely great. I do want to um, just let you know about this as well. People tell you to go onto LinkedIn because it's a B2B, more corporate stuff. The problem that you have is people check LinkedIn once a week. Yeah. People are checking Facebook eight times a day. So a lot of people will say to you, oh, yeah, you should be on LinkedIn. And yes, you should be. But you sh Facebook is the, the, num the number third search engine is Facebook. So number one is Google. Number two is YouTube. Number three is Facebook. LinkedIn is down here. And your active daily users is drastically less. So even though you are doing corporate, those people 
are still on social media. They're still on Facebook. And they're yeah. still going to see you and they're still going to remember you. So don't disregard Facebook because I have got a pesticide company that get all their body corporate gigs all from Facebook. All of them. Because a property mm -hmm. manager has seen a post, gone, I love what I see, and they've connected them to the right person. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, excellent. Josh? Um, yeah, I was with Bill there, probably just having um, maybe a little bit more business presence in my private profile. Um, I, I keep the two very separate for no apparent reason at all, but I just thought that was the way things worked. Um, I do know a lot of uh, a few competitors of mine, which I'm friends with on personal. He plugs his business a bit more on, on his social, on his personal, sorry. So, yeah, that was, yeah. And the auto response on the message. I think that's a great idea too. Yeah, excellent. So, Josh, the... Um... When it comes to your personal profile, um, when it comes to your personal profile, your personal profile is personal, but you have to put some of your business stuff in there. I'll tell you the story. I used to go to this networking group every single Tuesday morning, and I used to sit next to this hot electrician. Like, he was so hot. He wore these tight little pants. Like, you know, like... <laughs> No, you men do it to women. I can do it to men. <laughs> and he was a and he was a young, hot guy. He was so sweet, like so lovely. Sat down next to me. And I saw him every Tuesday. He stood up and introduced his business every single Tuesday. I was on his personal profile and he did CrossFit. So I always see him, you know, doing CrossFit and training and stuff on his personal profile. And then the one day my partner's renovating his house. And when he's renovating his house, he says to me, Hey, Chantel, can you find me an electrician, please? Because mm -hmm. I like, we've got to get some work done. Uh, you know, can you find me someone? I'm like, shit, I don't know an electrician. And I went straight to Google, found someone on Google, booked the person in, they did the job. The next Tuesday, I sat down, this guy stood up and introduced himself. And I just went, oh my gosh, I'd sat next to this guy for a whole year. And I mean, maybe I was just looking at his pants because honestly, his butt was so tight in those little pants. But <laughs> honestly, I thought, why did I do it? For me, it was really important that I figured out why I did it. And I realized that I didn't see his business page coming up, hardly ever. He hardly posted on his business page. So even though I followed his page, I hardly saw his business page. So it didn't remind me between Tuesday and Tuesday that he was an electrician. And when I saw him on his personal profile, I only ever saw him doing CrossFit or camping with his little Kelpie. I never saw him going to work that day. Mm -hmm with his van and he had a signed van. So I actually sat down with him afterwards and I told him, and after that he started putting photos of him going for coffee with his van in the background, just reminding people that you know, like, and trust already that this is what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because definitely. those people forget or they think you're busy and you're not looking for more clients. So I'm not saying spam, but I'm saying remind them. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, cool. Um, and I hope you appreciate my sense of humor. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, right, number one. Uh, so now we are moving on to Facebook groups. Okay. So when it comes to Facebook groups, Facebook groups are either, and it depends who sets them up. Whoever sets them up decides the privacy setting. Okay. And they've set up these groups for a reason. They'll either set them up as public, meaning everyone can see everything. Closed, meaning that you've got to ask to go into it. So you can't see the content until you go in. Or secret, meaning unless you have a link, you can't join it. Okay. People in groups are called members. There is a description in the group and the administrators of the group in that description will let you know what the rules are. They will say, hey, this is a community group. You're only allowed to post once a week and it's only allowed on a Thursday. OK, you're not allowed to privately message members. Um, so they might have some rules. So it's really important to know what those rules are. There's rules and etiquette, which they will convey. There are categories as well. So whether or not it's a community group or it's a buy and sell group, um, there, there might be multiple admins. And it is important to note that the admin might do what you do. So say, for example, um, there is um, Bob and Mary. 
Bob isn't an electrician. Mary is the wife and Mary's managing the social media. Mary goes, I'm going to set up a community group in the area that we live. And we're going to set it up in Eleonora. So in Eleonora, Mary sets up a group in Eleonora to support the community, build a relationship with them in Eleonora. And her husband's, Bill, uh, her husband's Bob, who is an electrician. If Bill goes in and tries to promote his business in that group, is Mary going to allow it? No, it's not. So go and stalk the administrators, okay? And if that person is an electrician, chances are they're going to hide your content and not allow you to post. So when you join a group, I'll show you what you do. Uh, I'll show you what you do after this. So you can run events inside the group. There is a file section, so you can add files into the group. Um, if you own a group, you can schedule in that group. You can have 50 featured posts. So it's kind of like a pinned post, but there are 50 of them. So when you go into a group, go look at the featured posts, just, you know, stalk the administrator, stalk and see what type of content they feature. Some of them actually, some of the admins may also allow you to pay. So for example, I've got a client who sells caravan mattress toppers and she pays $15 a month to be able to $15 a week to be able to post in that group, but she gets sales from it. So just letting you know that some of the admins on, have monetized their group and do allow that, they will also feature it in those featured posts or in the description. Uh, you can be tagged in those, po in those uh, groups. Your page cannot be ta uh, tagged if that group doesn't allow pages. So some groups only allow people to engage, they don't allow pages to engage. Okay, and that is why your personal profile, your little face that engages, as I said, you'll be cutting off your arm if you don't, if you're super private um, and you don't allow it because those groups won't allow you to join unless there is a personal profile attached to it. So even if you just let your business stuff show. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to this. Oh, it's right in the wrong place. We'll have to go all the way back. Oh, there it is. So, sorry, slides in the wrong order. So what I want to show you is this over here will change your life. And this is what I was doing with that electrician where he picked up a, a client. This I call a Facebook group spreadsheet. These are all the groups, and this is just an example, but groups that I belong to, and they are all clickable. So this is something that your VA can do, all right? They set this up. They go every single community group in the area. So normally I start with the overall and I'll search for groups on the Gold Coast, Gold Coast groups, and I'll join all of them, add which day I'm allowed to promote and write it on the spreadsheet and put that as a clickable link. Then I'll go all the Burley groups because Burley is a suburb inside Gold Coast. And I'll go all the Burley groups. Then I'll go all the Rabina groups and all the Kulangata groups. And I literally will search all the community groups and all the buy and sell groups and all the classified groups in the area. And I will go read the description. I will read when I'm allowed to post and I will join them and put them on the spreadsheet and write the day that I'm allowed to post. So when I wake up on Monday, I can literally click that link. It'll take me in there and I know exactly what I'm allowed to do on that day. Okay. Life changing. Life changing. Okay. So, sorry, this is completely all in the wrong order, but that's okay. So how do you actually generate leads or Facebook? Well, firstly, in a business community or classified group, there are people that are asking for things, right? So a person might go, hey, I'm looking for a plumber to fix a drainage problem. Does anyone have any recommendations? So somebody you've worked with called Lizzie goes, hey, at Bob's Plumbing uh, did a great job for us. Okay. Now, firstly, and this is why I say your staff has to go in every day, because you're going to get a notification to say that Lizzie's tagged at Bob Plumbing. So you've got to see the notification so that you can go into the group and you can respond. So your staff need to be logged in as you to be able to see this or at least be an admin on your page to hopefully see this. But your staff, I can tell you right now, are not doing this. So you are losing leads. 
because there's two parts to a strategy. The one is having a well set up profile with good content, attracting people to it. The other part is going out onto the platform, finding people who are looking for you and putting yourself in front of them. Just a quick question. Is it is it just me or is Facebook business so much harder to use than personal Facebook? I find it so much harder to navigate sometimes. Like it's ridiculous. Tags don't come up when I know they've been tagged. I can't reply as my business name unless I'm just a numpty. I don't know. <laughs> so look, if it's a recent problem that you have, if it's in the last three months, Facebook has just changed its template and the way that they're doing things. And they're probably three different templates that Facebook's using at the moment. So I couldn't even tell you where that is until I saw what, what template you have. Because my clients yeah. at the moment have got about three different templates. It's all in a different place. Yeah, so you yeah. now have to switch between profiles in order to do it. It has it has changed. It has become, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it has become harder because it's new and things are in a different place. So if it's a problem you've had in the last three months, then yes. And you've just got to familiarize yourself with it. Yeah. Um, but it's worth familiarizing yourself with it. It's like suddenly you have an electric car. You've always wanted an electric car. Now you're going to have to work, learn how to use the electrics. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Same thing. Thank you. Yeah. And um, yeah. And if you booked an audit with me or something, or, you, you know, if you work one-on-one -on -one with me, that's something we can do is I can go through and just show you where everything is. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, so then Lizzie will go, okay, at Blooming, uh, Bob's plumbing did a great job for us. Now, if your virtual assistants aren't going in every single day, all the other plumbers will come in and go, hey, we can help, we can help, we can help, we can help. And you are not going in and you are not pitching. Terrible. Even if they say, hey, listen, I found someone, you still go and pitch. And when you pitch, you put your point of difference. Because some are people are lazy pitchers. Hey, I'm available. I'll do it for you. You have got to have some copy paste pictures that you can put in to do it. So Bob's Plumbing or the VA will come in and go, hi, I'm at Bob's Plumbing. So put your link again. We have been plumbers for 20 years, helping your local community between Burley and Coolagatta. So put your location because location is non-negotiable. We pride ourselves in good communication, reliability and professionalism. The other plumbers are not going to write that. So, and what do people struggle with with plumbers? Um, good communication, reliability, and professionalism. With the rain we've had recently, we understand the importance of good good drainage long term. So you're showing them that you don't do quick fix, you do long term. Call our reception to arrange a quote. Others will go, hey, yeah, we'll help. Okay, so whoever pitches the best will get the client. Now, you might not even get this client, but everyone else looking in the community groups later on will come back and go, out of all the pitches, I like your pitch. You've told me the location. You've told me how to, how I'm going to quote. You've told me you've good communication reliability. You've told me you've got over 200 online reviews. You told me you're certified, qualified, and insured. You told me you wear a belt around your pants because that's a big thing in the plumbing industry. Um, in the IT industry, it's about smelling good. So I, I, our IT smell good because apparently mobile IT smell terrible. Um, I don't know why, um, but that's, yeah, just to tell you, just so you know. So yeah, our IT guys smell well, smell good. All right, cool. So the second one is on your personal profile, your business page, your Facebook or, or Facebook group, you post with intention, okay? And we are going to go through a social media content plan. So I'm not going to go too much into this one, but you might post, how are you going with the drainage after this rain? Should be a question mark. All right. So you're showing interest in your, in your local community. It's a conversation. It's social. How are you going with the drainage or with your drainage after this rain? Here are three things. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I wrote this this morning. <laughs> Here are three things to check to ensure you don't get washed out in the next downfall. Okay. Give them the one to three tips. We are available to help. Call our reception on to arrange a quote. We've been plumbers for 20 years, helping your local community between this area and that area. We pride ourselves on this, this, and that. And then people will like, they'll share their comment or they'll inquire. Okay. Get them off Facebook and onto your database. You do not want to be messaging them backwards and forwards in social media. Again, this is something I learned on Tinder. 
If you're messaging them backwards and forwards, they will go looking and price comparing elsewhere. If you get them onto your emails or a phone call, they will actually stop looking elsewhere and be fully engaged with you. Okay, Josh is writing notes. He must be on Tinder. Um, <laughs> um, cool. So you want to get them into your CRM. You want to get them onto an email. My biggest regret in business was not doing this. So I've only been doing this the last three years. And I was able to sell my business because I did do it. You have to build your email list of prospects. You have to build an email list of prospects. Because even though it's a no for right now, it might be a yes later on. They just need nurturing. So rather than them going to Google, you could put them on your email database, send out a monthly newsletter, show them some success stories, and let them know that um, you're still around. Because maybe the timing was not just right right now. So for example, maybe they started talking to you about the deck, but maybe they are two months away from doing the deck. They will forget about you. They will go back to social media, back to Google unless you can get that email address and go, hey, listen, we'll quote, even if it's two months later, let us quote, let's get your contact details and I'll follow up with you. So CRM, email list. Too many people are looking for new leads and they're not nurturing and looking after the ones they have. It takes 11 touch points before you are even considered. Okay? Think of it as foreplay, 11 touch points before you are even considered. Okay? Huge. I had um I had a client recently say to me, oh, I've been doing the principles in the Facebook group for the last week and I've only got one client. And I said, it takes 11 touch points and you've already got one on one touch point. You're a lucky dog. Okay, uh, I just want to go back now. Nope. Yep, fundamentals is what I want to go into. Cool. So these are the fundamentals. Um, I'll go over them very quickly. Your personal brand is important. We spoke about it. People have got to know, to they've got to know, love, and trust you. However extroverted or introverted or faceless or faceful you are, just make up your mind what that personal branding is and be consistent about it, okay? Just like Tinder, don't put your photos up from 10 years ago. It's not authentic. Number two, know your ideal client and know them intimately. In order to come up with content and to talk to them, you've got to know their likes, their needs, their wants, their frustrations. How do I know that mobile ITs apparently smell bad? We had to market survey it to see what the biggest problem was in the industry so we could communicate that and, and handle that in our content. You've got to know how to make them happy. So if you know that other deck layers are boring, what are you going to do to make yourself stand out? Number three is stalk your competitors. And this is not so that you can copy them. It's so that you can differentiate yourself from them. Marketing is all about differentiation. I'm an accountant. I do tax returns. I'm an accountant. I do tax returns. I'm an accountant. I do tax, tax returns. Hey, I'm a proactive accountant who can help you um, save tax um, and save tax and have more retirement money put away. Um, and I'm approachable and... Uh, and I'm approachable and hold you accountable. Okay, I'm an tax and I, I'm a tax. I'm an accountant. I do tax returns. Versus the last one, who do you think is going to get the gig? Put your points of difference in your messaging. What you do that is different, that especially what other people are struggling with. I don't go say that um, the IT mobile people smell terrible. I just say our IT guys smell nice. If anything, it'll start up a conversation. Branding consistency. When we talk about branding consistency, we don't just talk about your colors and your fonts. We talk about your tone and your voice. I am cheeky. That is part of my messaging. That is part of my images. If you go onto social media, if people work one-on-one -on -one with me, they're going to have to be comfortable with that or they're not going to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with me. And that's okay. So I have that message in there so they're not surprised by it when it happens, but also like attracts like. People who appreciate it will work with me. So tone and voice and words that come out of your mouth need to be consistent. Have a strategy, meaning what is your overall intention? And I think it was 
Michael talk about, you know, what is your overall intention? I like to do quarterly content plans. My advice to you would be to sit down with your team, put it into your uh, onto your calendar. It is a quarterly meeting, marketing meeting. And in that, what are we doing over the next quarter? What season are we going into? What in this season are people struggling with right now? What is our content going to be about over the next three months? What do we need to sell more of? What do we want to focus less on and more of? What are our key messaging going to be? What are our top tips going to be around? I mean, I'm going to give you the whole social media content plan, but sit down quarterly. So what is what what is my strategy for you? Put it in your diary. Put 20 minutes in a day for your staff every day to manage your marketing. Put in a hour, it's just an hour, every quarter to do a quarterly content plan. And in that day, you're also going to go over your insights, which I'll go over shortly as well. Project management system that I like, if you don't have one, I use one that's called Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. Danielle can put it in the uh, chat, chat box for you. It is free. I love it because for you guys, you'll love it too, because it is an app on your phone. So if I've got a brainstorm, I don't know if you can see that. If I have a brainstorm, I can't see what you can see. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Trello, it's an app. Hold on, let's kick out of that one there. I literally, I've got joint boards that my staff have. So my social media manager, we will have a shared board. And if I go into the shared board, I've got, there's my upcoming uh, events. I've got, oh, can you share my book that I did? Um, oh, here's some things that people have been struggling with right now. So I've written some topics that you could talk about. And they it's a shared board. So what happens is they get the notification and they go, oh, okay. Um, you know, Michael wants me to create something about uh, mold, uh, preventing mold on plasterboard that seems to be happening right now. So Michael is out on the road in Trello, puts it on the share board, hey, mold. And your VA picks it up and goes, okay, cool. I can start creating content around that. Is that helpful, Michael? Yeah, cool. Let's have a look. Sorry, I can't see Michael. Michael, was that helpful? Uh, oh, sorry, just unmute yourself. Yeah, cool. So Trello is absolutely amazing. It's an app. It's also on a desktop. They get it in an email. So they get notified in an email to say that you've dumped something on their board. Um, and this is what my all my, my tradie clients do because literally if they're doing termite inspection and there's um, termites or... Um, you know, plasterboards falling down before and after. You just load it into Trello. Boom, boom, boom. Into Trello, a brief description. Your social media person now has got a whole whack of stuff that they can go and put in and put in all the different platforms. So, Chantel, is that the same? Is Trello the same as Monday.com? Yeah, Monday, Asana, yes. Okay, so I've got Monday, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you should also have the app on your phone. Why I love it, especially for, you know, people in the industry is often you just want to dump it in your phone. Super, yeah. super easy. I call it a toilet activity where you can literally sit and just go, right, I'm just going to put my before and after there, or you can create content on this or that, dump it in there. They've got it. They can now go and um, so they're never at a loss for content. And I am going to give you some of the topics, but um, not only that, they can create a leads board. This is really important. So say they've yeah. got a leads board and Mary has contacted you through Facebook saying they need help with something. They don't know how to answer it or do it. You could say, hey, listen, Mary's on Facebook and Messenger um, asking this question. You might want to go in and just have a look. And you can communicate in Trello. You just at someone and Monday will be the same. You just at that person. And when you at them, they get an email. So they don't have to be in Trello or Monday. They get an email to say, hey, Michael has just commented on the Trello board. And all your communication about that stays there so it's not lost in emails. Life-changing. Cool. 
R&R and &R is not rest and relax, relaxation. It is important for you to review and respond. Like I said, 20 minutes a day, your staff should be going in and reviewing and responding every single day. Um, and But also reviewing their strategy and going, is it working? Is it not working? Is this pitch working? Is it not working? They should be responding to people. They should be building relationships with people. They should be referring people and catching those referrals and should be making sure that your reputation uh, is intact online. And then again, just get them off social media as soon as possible um, into emails or your database and making sure that you are stalkable. If you were to go stalk yourself on your personal profile, imagine you don't know yourself, go onto your phone, go to your personal profile, do a five finger scroll. So one, two, three, four, five, and go, if I didn't know myself, how do I look to a stranger? Go to your business page, go one, two, three, four, five, because no one, generally people don't go over five. If I was a stranger, do I know what location you are in? Do I know where you work? Do I know what you're offering? Um, five finger store works really well. Uh, no worries. Let's have a little. So the algorithm. Okay, so the algorithm freaks people out and everyone blames the algorithm. But basically, it's just a prediction. And if you use the platforms correctly and put the right data in, it will match you. So if you're constantly talking about electrical stuff and helping people in the community groups and posting tips around electrical stuff, when people in your area are asking for electricians, you will come up. They will come up on your feed and you will come up on their feed because you are posting. So it is imperative that you use the search words on your profiles and in your setup so that they can connect with you and find you, okay? Um, that just explains exactly what I've just said there now. So it's social media, it's social. It means your tone should be social, okay? So even though you are corporate and B2B, when I say social, I mean still respectful of who you're talking to, but it needs to be like you're talking to someone. Often I say to people, if you're stuck writing, just talk it and type it at the same time. Sharing success stories is really easy and be careful to not be too overly salesy. Um, you want to show statistics, show your services, share other content and offer your potential client solutions. So for example, there's been a lot of mold recently um, in the area. Um, this, is how, this is what you can do in order to protect your plaster board from, plasterboard from mold. Not that I know that plasterboard does do mold. All right, so reviewing your insights. This is checking the tire pressure of your car. This is checking the water and oil in your car is reviewing your insights each week. If you do not do it, you're not able to optimize and get the most out of your platforms. And I like free things, but if you want them to be free and you want them to work, You've got to go in and see how many people you're reaching, how many responses you've had, how many likes you're getting in a month. Is it better than last month? And hold your team accountable. Your team on the first whatever day of the month, for me, it's the first Friday of every month, my team have to email me this. So if they're in charge of social media, they need to email me this at the end of um, the month and say to me, last month we got these many likes, this month we got this likes, this is what I think we need to have more of, this is what I think was working well. Because we have to think, are we getting clicks to the website? Are we getting telephone kicks? Are people clicking to directions? Which post is getting the most engagement? When you go in, you can actually see the demographic. Is it male? Is it female? What age group are they? And is everything going up? Is everything going up? Your team should be doing this no less than once a month. They should send you a report. Okay? For me, I'm, I'm, I'm always curious. I go in every Friday. So I do mine weekly, but my team send it to me monthly. But I go in every week and literally it takes me five minutes. Again, a toilet activity. Sit in, go to your insights on your, pers on your, uh, on your pages and have a look and go, Oh, that's why I think it's green. That post really worked well. That day and time seems to have done well. Oh, I see why that one worked well. Yeah, I need to do more of that. So that you can set up the goal for the next week. So this is some of the reasons why people are losing out on business. Um, I'm actually not going to 
if this is not, I think we've covered absolutely everything on this. We have your point of difference, unique selling point, your personal profile, unclear messaging, um, all the things that we've discussed already are not posting consistently, not answering your messages, not responding to tags. It's everything that we have discussed over here. Um, take a screenshot if you like quickly, and then I'll move on because we have gone over this. So if you want to take a screenshot quickly. Uh, just let me know when you're done. Just thumbs up and then I'll carry on. Okay, three thumbs up. Thank you. Cool bananas. So here we go. This one's really important. And you definitely want to take a screenshot of this so you have it um, and you don't have to wait for the recording. Um, social media content plan. All right. P-O-D, POD. What does it stand for? Point of difference. Marketing is about what you do that's different to everyone else. It has to be consistent. It has to be branded. And we talk about your messaging as well. Number one, you need to have you in your socials. However extroverted or introverted, you need to have you in them. Even if it's just the back of your head, even if it's you behind a camera. So if you don't want to be videoing you in the camera, video yourself talking behind the camera and don't show you. Okay. But you have to have some sort of some you or personal brand. Show social, social proof. So you need to be sharing screenshots of success stories. You need testimonials that people have done. You can take screenshots, put them in there, or just share before and after stories. Credibility. You need to show, um, do you belong? Have you won awards? Are you registered, licensed, certified? We have proven that people in the trades industry, just by saying licensed and qualified and insured, get more, more, get more traction and more... Um, better results than people who don't mention that, even though most of them do have it, except my concreter who worked for me. He didn't, he lied. Um, that was a three month debacle. Um, expertise, this is the did you knows, adding value. Oh, we're struggling with mold right now, so adding value. Six is desirable offer. Desirable offer might be, hey, listen, yes, we do termite inspections and we do pest control, but if you do termite inspections and pest control, we'll throw in the rodents, the rodents as well. Okay. Desirable offer, meaning, and often it's really good if you bundle things. Hey, we're we coming to your house anyway. Rather than coming and just changing that light bulb, can I come and do a 20 point check, change your light bulbs, or do something else just for an extra $20? So, desirable offer, it is, it's maybe they haven't thought about it, but it's a desirable something that you can offer them that pe perhaps your uh, competitors aren't. Your business backstory, your why, they like to hear about how you fell into your business. Maybe you've got like a, you know, trauma story. You would have heard mine at the beginning. They will, people love to hear about how you suffered and then, you know, you redeemed yourself afterwards and they want to see how you fell along the way. Community. So if you're involved in an AFL club, a squash club, uh, you, you know, whatever, your kids do horse riding, just, to, just put that in there as well. Um, solve a problem with your services. So again, it's about, customer and outcome focused rather than saying we are electricians we will fix your wiring rather focus on the problem and hey um you know if you know of anybody that's elderly um and they're struggling to um and they need their switches moved to closer to the bed so they can turn their lights on and off um you know we'd like to help anyone that you know that may be elderly so much better than saying hey we move light switches I've not just now told the story about the old lady getting out of bed, touching the light switches, okay? Solve a problem with your services. Number 10 is pitching. We spoke about that earlier. 11 is frequently asked questions. If people are asking questions all the time, add that to a board called frequently asked questions and they become part of your social media plan. Objections. Objections might be, um, do you work after hours? Do you work weekends? You can actually just create that as a post. Did you know we work weekends? Did you know we work after hours? Did you know our phones are always managed? So whatever objections there may be, create that in your content. Statistics, left brain people. Um, left brain people are statistics people. 28% of this like this, 26% of that like this. Did you know the value of your property rises by this amount if your electricals are done right? Um, so whatever, just find those statistics, just Google them, but you have to um, have statistics. 14 is seasonal. Again, talking about mold, drainage, flooding, like whatever is seasonal. Uh, 15 is engaging and asking. Again, um, you know, engaging people. I I'd like to be connected to somebody who is looking 
to plasterboarding their warehouses. Just ask. You'll be surprised at how many people can connect you. Um, I had a Japanese home student, homestay student. I literally created that post and I was able to find an accommodation within an hour. Um, so we forget to just ask things online. Can you connect me to this person? Number 16 is user-generated content, which would be show me your deck. Uh, tell me your worst um, electrical story. Do you have like an electrical boo-boo uh, to share with me? Um, my, Michael might go, what do you want to plasterboard? Um, you know, your, your granny into the spare room or something. So, you know, you just want to think about that. And then, of course, 17 is video. So when it comes to video, again, just take a screenshot if you want immediate access to this. But as promised, I will send this to you um, probably on Monday. Video marketing includes lives, reels, video. You can do lives. They don't need to be pointed on you. As I said, you can be behind the camera and just doing a live. I just want to show you, especially in your industry, when you're out on, your, on the road, you can tell your team members. This over here is, don't worry about the mic. This is a mic, but you don't need it. This is called a gorilla. It comes from Big W. It's 20 bucks. You can tie this around. You can actually tie it around things. So like you could tie it around it so it can actually watch you doing the plasterboarding or watch you doing it so that you not don't blow yourself up, you know, while you're trying to video yourself changing a wire. Um, but people love to see disastrous things. So, you know, show them disastrous wires and show them disastrous plasterboards and dodgy things and people love it. But the gorilla really helps. As I said, Big W, you can get them online, but I think they're 20 bucks there. Uh, you can do lives, you can do reels, you can do video. Always have intention. You don't just go live. You go, my intention is to show how bad this is and how I can help with that, okay? So that when you go on, you don't waffle. Uh, number two, it's about building your relationship with the audience. So imagine you're talking to someone. Make sure that you're genuine and authentic. So whatever that genuine and authentic is for you. I'm a face puller, so I always pull faces. Um, it needs to be worth the watch. If you stop being worth the watch, people will stop watching you. So there has to be something valuable in there, okay? Um, but it has to be worth the watch. Five subtitles, um, ensure that you do have subtitles turned on so that um, people can read it. Um, number six is follow a post structure. So the post structure is a captivating headline that stops the right person from scrolling. Number two is connect with their pain. Number three is why you, I'll send this to you. I'll add this, I'll add that part in because it's not on this video. And number four then is the call to action, the next step. So captivating headline stops the right person. Number two is connect with the pain that person's feeling. Number four is show them why you, why now. And number four is what their next step is. Point people to the live. So if you create a live, you go into your other platforms and you say, I just created a live on my Facebook page, go and check it out. You send it out in your newsletter and go, hey, send it out. You've got to point people to the live. You've got to share it. Just because you went live doesn't mean it's going to go viral. You still have to take those URLs and share them and tell everyone about it and tag people and hashtag people so that they can um, get better engagement. All right, so get up, do... 10 star jumps, and then we're going to go into Instagram. <laughs> yeah, on. Just twerk. Um, the good news <laughs> is, is as, a, as a strategist, I tell people you do not have to twerk to get business. In fact, I believe twerking in your business can get you no business. <laughs> so your um, tip about the Gorilla Grip um, camera holder. So yeah. Andreas, one of the guys that has been through your presentation before, he got himself one and all of a sudden all his little videos are so much better. He does um, tile regrouting. So he puts it in fast, you know, fast forward and he films himself doing the job. all the steps. Yep. And it's so much better because he's got a social media manager and they use them all in their little video yeah. Instagram clips. So definitely the yeah. little Gorilla Grip camera holder. He went out and grabbed one. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks, the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. I also want to let you know that in the job description for your staff, like your VA staff, but also for the staff who do the jobs, okay? So for the plasterer who goes out and does the plasterboard, 
in their job description, you can say it is part of their job description to give you content each week. That they have to video and send it to you. If they go, oh, no, I don't want to do it, doesn't matter. Beauticians, hairdressers, tradies, every single person, it is now part of the job description to say, you will send us content. You will send us video content. They don't have to be in it. They have got to send you stuff. Okay. And again, they can just add it to Trello yeah. board and send it through. You could give bonuses to your staff. If you've got four, um, four people who lay the decks and they work for you, have a monthly competition of who gives you the best content into Trello. They've all got a board. Each person loads it into the board. At the end of the month, you give them a box of beer. Works a treat. Works a treat. Monthly competition. Monthly competition. Who gets the most reviews? Another box of beer. That's a great idea. I try to get even yesterday, for example, we were we were on one of these, and um, I bought the boys Uber Eats, got it delivered to site just to say, you know, happy Friday. Thanks for working there without me. My mate, to get a to get them to take a video of the boss shouting them lunch was like. It was the hardest thing. I'm like, mate, I, I didn't really do it for you. I wanted it for the gram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, the problem is, is that you are going to be working backwards, meaning that it's not in their job contract now. Moving mm. forward, any of your job contracts that you set up, there has to be a social media marketing responsibility. Social media marketing responsibility. You are to provide content as needed. It's really interesting. I've got a roofer. He gives me amazing content because he's out there on job sites overseeing it and taking photos. He's got a drone and everything. And then I've got a HVAC guy. I cannot get one photo out of him. His staff don't take photos. And it's like, how can I promote you guys on Google Business Profile? I need work that you've done, not stock images. And he goes, I can't get them to do it. So I'm going to suggest that Uber Eats. That's a really good one because they're all, you know, young guys. And the last thing they want to do is take and, a photo. And you can yeah. private message the Uber guy and ask him to take a photo. Tell him you'll tip him. You'll tip the Uber driver 10 bucks, 20 bucks if he can get a shot of them taking the food. So the Uber driver takes the photo and sends it to you. That's a good idea. Yeah. However... Again, I have to say this. It really has to be in your job description. So yeah. So I just had, my daughter's just changed school and I had to sign a social media responsibility form yesterday to say that she may or may not be in photos. Photos may be taken. We may need staff photos. You are to make yourself available for photos. You can take, you, um, you may be included in photos. We may tag you in photos. Like where they sign a contract, they actually, all of that needs to be in the contract. So moving forward, that's what you've got to do. Each week you are to upload and put it in. But having a competition does keep them motivated, but having it in their um, in their job description is completely allowed. It, everyone is like that right now. Like that's what they're doing. Even if it's just once a week, if you've got four staff members, they do it once a week, you've now got four posts. The other mm. part is getting reviews. They have to ask the person for it. Or alternatively, you bring me in and I train your team. So I've gone in, I've trained so many teams because now you're not seen as the baddie. I go in and I actually train them how to get a review, how to take a photo. Yeah, cool. All right. So we'll just mute you again and we'll go into Instagram. I am hoping to finish in 25 minutes. So I'm not going to give you a break uh, because, yeah, I will have my daughter's uh, people arriving. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> Um, but without rushing, of course, being respectful. So Instagram and your business. I believe in the 80%, 20% rule. 80% of your time you you spend on the income-reducing platform. 20% you spend on all others. So Instagram may not be your platform. I'm going to tell you this. Some tradies make it their platform, and it is. Others are so much more successful on Facebook. Instagram has less users, less engagement, it's more, it's more, your images have got to be better. Your videos have got to be more creative. I'm telling you right now. So I am going to go through this quickly. 
only 20% of your time needs to be spent on Instagram for branding awareness. 80% of your time should be on Facebook and spent in groups following everything that we've just learned. And then you just put 20% of your time, you just go in to make sure that it looks pretty. Okay? I'm taking the pressure way off you. Okay? Because it's where are your ideal customers looking for your service? And on Instagram, they're looking at pictures, they're looking at videos, they're not necessarily looking for your service. Even though it's a picture platform, plasterboard's not sexy, electricals are not sexy, and decks may be sexy. Um, but still, the problem with that is that it's not very location-based. Whereas Facebook, you can go into a group that's in that location and show them. Whereas Instagram is all over the world. So, and there's more people on Facebook. So here's some of the stats. Most men are in Instagram. It's very much a male platform. And most women are the ones that are looking for your services. Women are looking for your services, not men. Okay. And it's usually younger men. Does anyone know why? I'll tell you why. I had a client who came to me. He's a photographer. And he says on Instagram, um, he's doing uh, he's doing so well. But all the people that are looking at his stuff is men that are between the ages of 25 and 34. And no one else is looking at his stuff on Instagram because, um, but his his demographic was corporate men, corporate headshots, which were like 40 to 50 year old men. And he goes, I don't understand why they're doing it. Anyway, I go onto Instagram and have a look. He has got his hot wife who is like that age. And that is why everyone is on his platform. And that's why they're younger. So I said to him, you need to be showing corporate headshots of corporate people, not your hot young wife, because you're catching the wrong people. Okay, so even though you're getting engagement, you're getting looks, if the demographics are wrong, what's the point? You're not going to get those people to um, those people to sign up. So, yeah, you've got to be very savvy with good imagery, video content, hashtags and trending music or dancing. So if you guys are clowns and love to dance, twerk and whatever, yes, I want you on Instagram. If you love doing it, put together some time, go and do some reels because you love it, do it. If you don't love it, why waste your time? Why waste your time doing it if you don't love it? Because you have to be good at it because a bad reel is not going to work anyway. Why make one? Why make it if it's going to be bad anyway and not get the reach? So this is Instagram. Uh, you've got your personal profile. Then you've got your business page, your business page name. You've got your bio. Your bio is, um, it's, it's, it's expected for you to have some emojis in there. It's very expected that you use the words people would be looking to search for you. Um, and it's very important that you have the link that you want them to set, that you want to send them to, because that link is the only link that is available. Okay. Um, you've, these are called highlights. So all these little circles over here are called highlights. And basically they are stored st stories. So when you create a story that only lasts for 24 hours, your stories, you can save there forever if you want to see them, okay? Um, then these pictures down over here, these three that you can kind of half see, these are called posts or they are called tiles. And they are hard, they hardly get engagement right now, okay? You would use the post structure, headline, connect with their pain, show you as the solution, call to action, remembering that links do not work on Instagram. So you have to say, click the bio for the link. Click the bio for the link. If you have a look where posters over here, you can see there's reels. That is where all your videos will be kept inside the reels tab. Um, and then if anybody tags you as well, that will be kept behind the tag button. Up at the top, you've got those other icons. You've got the little house, which takes you home. You've got your messenger button, remembering that on Facebook, it's called DMing. On Facebook, it is PMing. You PM, private message. Instagram, you DM, you direct message. Um, there's a little plus sign, which I'm going to show you in the next slide, which opens up everything. So if you go to Instagram, just click the plus sign. Um, uh, let's go to the next one. Cool. So the little plus sign, if we're looking at the left-hand side, the little plus sign will open up and it will allow you to post a reel a post, which is a tile, a story, a story highlight, or it will allow you to go live. So that is where you go to, to be able to do that. 
Instagram is very much app based. It you can now go onto it on a desktop and you can actually do some stuff on a desktop, but it is more, it was originally designed on your mobile device. So it is better for you to learn how to do it there. Your Facebook lives are the little circle. So when you choose to go live, when you go live, you will get a live stamp on your little circle profile picture and people will see it. And that's where they see lives is in that little profile circle. Okay. I've explained stories and story highlights. Um, I've spoken about posts and then of course reels. So if we go to the center one now, if you go to post a story, this will come up in the center and the little A's will give you your text. The little square with the smiley face will open up the right hand side, which is where you can check in. You put your location, which is imperative if you are a location based business, imperative for you to use the location icon. The at symbol to at people, so at your referral partners or at the business that you actually just went to. You can add additional photos on top of photos. You can ask questions. You can even put uh, you can put one hashtag um, and you can also put a countdown. So say, for example, you have a special and it expires at some time. You can um, put the countdown on it. Um, just going back to the center picture, the little stars will give you filters um, and the, the three little dots. Remember, I said always touch the three little dots that will open it up so you can actually draw. So firstly, it's app-based, as I said, so you can work on a desktop, but more importantly, you can do it on a, um, a phone. Make sure that you've set up your username properly and there's consistency. So you're not one name on Facebook and another name on Instagram. And you need to know how to have your URLs to be able to share them and tag them. You want to also make sure that you go in and you connect your business profile to Facebook, okay? But you need to respect each platform and audience. So if we know that mostly it is men on the Instagram platform, our content's going to be more men directed. When we know Instagram is more pictures and videos, you're going to put more pictures and videos on Instagram. Facebook is more topical. It's more women. So we're going to, and it's longer content. We're going to put that on Facebook. Do not let your content go from Instagram to Facebook with all the hashtags because hashtags are an Instagram thing. They are not a Facebook thing. Okay, respect your platform, respect your audience. So thirdly, that little profile picture is tiny. So when you see a whole bunch of little faces, people don't know which is your business or which you are. You want to make sure that your face is big or your logo is big so that when you go into Instagram and you have a look, it is not confusing because it is so tiny. The little faces are so tiny, you cannot see them. And you're like, who is that? Who is that? What is that? So really important that it is big. You also want to make sure that you have a business page set up like, your, like Facebook, personal profile versus business page. Your business page allows you to have insights, allows you to set up a shop to sell products, allows you publishing tools to schedule. Um, and this is life-changing. On your phone, you can download the Business Suite app on your phone, Business Suite app. You can have Facebook and your Instagram on there. You can schedule, you can look at both insights and you can manage everything on your phone together. So you can create a post, you can make it longer and more womanly for Facebook, you can make it short, shorter and more manly with hashtags for the Instagram, and then you can schedule or post them. Business Suite app. You want to make sure that there's branding consistency. So what they see on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and Google is all the same. The names are all the same. The key messaging, the tone, the feel is all the same. Those tiles, which are those little squares, those posts, they are six to nine blocks at one go. So there's three across. And when you look at them, you see six to nine. So a lot of people will stagger it. They'll go, I don't know, like one person shot, one deck shot, one person shot, one deck shot, one person shot, one deck shot. So that it's themed. Now on Facebook, it's just a scroll. So you don't have to do that. But on Instagram, um, but on Instagram, you have to, you have to do that. Um, 
you you got you've got to make sure that when someone goes to your profile they can see six to nine squares in one go and they all look good okay um and that's why people will use like the same filters for example so the sixth one is obviously writing your captions and using your hashtags uh, instagram is very much about the hashtags uh you're looking for anything from seven to 14 hashtags never copy paste them, never use them in the same order and do not use general ones. You want to try and look for hashtags that have less than 50,000 posts. Um, you're looking for niche ones, you're looking for specific ones or personalized ones and they are the things that your ideal customer is looking for. So answerthepublic.com, you can go in and you can go to www.answerthepublic.com, you can put in plasterboards, Australia, and you can see exactly what people are searching for and use those hashtags. Okay, that's what people are actually searching for. Uh, question, just quickly. Sure. Why is it better to have less, uh, like, so for example, if a hashtag has less than 50,000 posts, why is that a good thing versus one that has one or two million posts? So wouldn't that be something that's more consistent? Because you, when you go onto the feed that has a million hashtags, are you going to be seen and out of a million? No. Point. So the feed has a million. You're now on a feed with a million. So what happens is they skim even more. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so look, I'm a big fan. If you're a location-based business, using that hashtag is really important for the location. So Gold Coast, hashtag Gold Coast. Because if you are on the Gold Coast, anybody that's on the Gold Coast, you're going to end up on the Gold Coast feed. So yes, there might be a million on that one. So I may choose that one. But I always say non-negotiable. So if you're a location-based business, you've got to make sure that people in that location are finding you. Gotcha. Okay, thank okay. you for that. No worries. So just like we spoke about on Facebook, just like we spoke about on Facebook, I said there's two strategies. One, you set up your profile really good and you've got good content and your branding and your tone and everything's great. The second part I call the growth strategy on Facebook. It's going out into groups and putting yourself in front of the right people. On Instagram, you have to go follow and engage with your cheerleaders and your referral partners. So, or where your customers are hanging out. So people don't do this. I can tell you right now, your staff, your VAs, your team will not do this. They hate it. So they may need training in it because they don't know what to do. So they don't do it. They just go, oh, that's too hard. I'm not doing it. Your, your platforms will not, will not grow if you do not go into groups on Facebook and if you do not go and engage in hashtags and your referral partners. I'll show you how that worked. There was a preschool on the Gold Coast. Um, the electrical wires, all the, all, everything went down. The electrician went over there, fixed their wires. Um, the They left a review for him on his page. He then went and thanked them on their Facebook page. They then actually shared him and said, thank you to this electrician who's in the community who helped us. How amazing. Um, but then on Instagram, he went onto Instagram and he went and followed their page, liked their page, started engaging in their content, they all went, oh, you're the electrician who helped helped out and, and helped them on that day. Actually, I'm needing an electrician. And then he ended up getting another school job from it. So money is left out on the table if you do not go and, again, just spend 20 minutes once a week doing this. Okay? 20 minutes every day to go in and engage and create content on your platforms, to look at your insights, and to go follow the growth strategy. And again, we've got to point people to Instagram. You can't just have these accounts. Uh, you need to, I have it on your Facebook, say, have you checked out my Instagram account? In your newsletter, have you checked out our Instagram account? Um, uh, in your social media platforms, when you set them up, check that you've connected your Instagram account. Put your Instagram icon on your website so it clicks through. You've got to keep pointing them to your platforms. I call it a power triangle. This is the order of how well they do. Reels do the best on Instagram. Lives do second best stories and then posts. I only think you should be spending 20% of your time on there unless you are really good at twerking or dancing or something. Like if you are, great, then, then choose the strategy. 
And as a strategist, I work with your skill points to do it. But reels, lives, stories, and posts, okay? But it is about connecting with people. It's not about collecting people. Instagram's quite fickle in that somebody will follow you and unfollow you. They don't like you anymore. They'll just unfollow you. So your numbers will go, eh, uh, eh, uh. Facebook's less like that because there's older, more mature people. They're like, I don't care. But Instagram's like, nah, -uh, I'll actually go back into your profile and I'll actually unfollow you because they're younger. Um, so it was all about collecting people. Can we collect people, collect people, collect people? Again, it's kind of like your personal profile and your business page on Facebook. It's all vanity measures, but also your, your algorithm gets diluted with the wrong people. You only want the right people on there. So how did you get those followers? Are they the right followers? And when you go and engage in people in the area, they will follow you back. And if you, lo if you service that location, you're now strengthening your location on Instagram. It is about engagement. It is about relationship building. You can follow the social media content plan from earlier on here as, as well. It is about authenticity. So you need to be in there as well. It is about connecting. Um, remembering though that you do have to send them to the bio to click into things. And that's the order. All right, that's us Q&A. So firstly, I mean, I'd love it if you can go follow my Facebook page, my Instagram account and my YouTube page because there is training on there as well. Chantel Girardi, online business strategist. Um, and I have a free resource for you. So if you do jump onto my website, which is onlinebusinessmarketing.com.au, You'll see this little pop-up, which is called Free Hot Leads on Repeat Whilst You Sleep. It is a 20-plus page resource, which talks about a lead generation strategy for both those platforms, okay? So I created that for you. You can scan the little code. It'll take you to the website, hopefully. Um, and you can download that resource on me before I send you this. If you want me to send you the recording, I just need, if Danielle can just email me uh, everybody's email address, that would be awesome. On the website, you can book a free 30-minute call for us to have a chin wag, and I can talk to you about the holes or the roadblocks that I see in your business. Um, and by subscribing on the website, you will get access to blogs, podcasts, checklists uh, when you do subscribe. All right, question time. So, um, Chantel, thanks for that. That was, that was pretty good. Um, just a question. Um, so I deal with a lot of T1 builders in terms of um, residential builders. Now, you've got T2 and T3. Now, T2 and T3 builders, for me, generally the directors or the wives of the directors are posted, like their Instagram or Facebook feeds. What I'm trying, what I picked up there, there's an opportunity for me to actually um, connect with them to see whether or not we can catch up via Instagram or Facebook. Is there a way, would, would, I'm just thinking, would a video be the best way of doing that? Like a personal video or like just an instant, like you've been watching it, how do I, you know, let's, let, let me see what we can do in terms of pricing their works. Like in terms of, because the, the way I'm viewing it is it's, it's, it's a phone call. It's like a cold call, if that makes sense, but via a message or a social media platform. Look, my one of what I believe in when it comes to this sort of thing is getting them the hell off social media. I don't believe, especially in the B2B space, that social media is the place to, to do that. And it could be quite spammy mm. because for you to suddenly send them a video, I don't know how you feel. Like, think about how you feel when it happens. Yeah, I've uh, got... I hate it. I absolutely hate it when they go, hey, this is me. I've just created this video. Can you look at it? I don't click it because I think maybe this, maybe it's broken or something. I'm more inclined if I am to do something to do a pitch. I'm more inclined to say, hey, I, che I checked you out. I see this is your business. This is what I do. And just a brief sort of overview. Just curious to know, you know, would it be okay if I sent you a company brochure? And once you've had a look, would you like to have a chat if it's something you're interested in? Yeah. Like that to me just seems a bit more logical. Well, so, so we do that customer just... mapping, and um, in that free resource, in that twenty-page document that you get, there is a customer mapping thing that you go through as well. There is a template, but it's it's got to be logical for the customer, and and then they'll go, sure, send me your catalog. So you're getting permission to send it. 
Um, it's also an NLP sales thing as well, is that you've got to get a yes before you. Yeah, I get it. You got to get a yes before you send them something. I'm not into, it's classed as spamming when you message someone and they haven't asked you to. So what I, happens? I'm sorry, keep going. Yeah, sorry. sorry. I could probably, so if they were commenting on something and I commented in the post, hey, Mary, I love what you do. Would it be okay That's if I sent message. you a private message? Yes, private message. Yeah. So, so that's exactly, that was the point I was going to lead to, what you said yeah. there. If I started hypothetically through my business commenting on their work profiles, what they've done and all that, over yeah. time, I'm not talking about straight away, yep. build some type of relationship with them, there's a connection there. Yeah. And then so let's say three months, four months into it, then send them a message. Look, yeah, oh, it, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be that long. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be that long. So, yeah. Um, it it wouldn't ha it wouldn't have to be that long and it, it literally yeah it could be quicker. It's the same as the Tinder thing. Like you literally you've got to get them into a conversation as soon as possible. Yeah, that's my so, point. Hey Mary, absolutely like love what you're doing here. Um, and I'd love to tell you a little bit about my business. So um, have a you know have a look at my business. This is what it is. But I'd love to have a chat with you to find out more about how find out more about your business and what you do. So in the relationship, it's always about. I'd love to talk to you about what I can do for you. It's not that. It's I'd love to chat with you to find out um, more about you because people love talking about themselves. So yeah. always hit it from the angle of I'd like to find out more about what you do, not I want to share with you what I do. Yeah, 100%. Because that's, that's exactly right. Because even if um, we make positive comments and all that, you know, uh, you know, acknowledge the fact that they're on an amazing job, at least it forces them to go, well, who the hell is TM on so then yeah. they'll start coming through. And at least they've got some. Now look at it, hundred percent. Then, then we can, and then we could just keep getting yeah. that dialogue. And then what you just spoke said that pitch. Yeah. If you'd like to chat, I'd love to chat to find out more about it. Um, is it okay if I private message you? Private message and go, hey, it's absolutely awesome. Um, would you like to have a chat about this? You know, um, I did this recently. I I, I saw it commented on somebody's post. I said, oh, that looks awesome. I'd love to chat with you further about this, about what they were doing. I said, can I send you a private message? They said, yes. I sent them a private message. So I actually moved quite quickly, sent them a private message, go, hey, um, I just replied to your message. So I always remind them, just replied to your message. I loved what you said over there. And I'd actually like to find out more about that. Um, would it be okay if we had a quick chat? Cool. Can we book in a call? Like here's my link or I'm available on, uh, people don't like to book calls. I don't know why. I wish they did, but they don't. So I go, I'm available at nine o'clock tomorrow. Is that okay if we have a call? Cool. I'll call you at nine o'clock. What's your number? I actually move quite quickly. Um, LinkedIn, you can be more spammy. LinkedIn, you can send a sales video straight away. You can send a brochure straight away. You can literally say, this is who I am. This is what I do. Are you interested or not? It's very much colder. Facebook's just a little bit more relationship based. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Thank you for that. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, um, sorry. Sorry. Go, Josh. Um, yeah, look, I don't, know, I don't know if it's a question, but I just I feel like I, I post way too much on Instagram. I hardly ever focus on Facebook. So I think I'm doing things a little bit backwards there. I guess more I thought, you know, being in my industry, having, you know, having nice photos, showing, showing completed works and, you know, staged works, Instagram was a better platform, but... Yeah, it's something I definitely want to look at differently. It's nice to show your stuff. Um, it's nice to show your stuff, but the problem with it is that um, so it's nice to show your stuff. I get it. Is it a is it customer generating platform? They two different things. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Brand awareness, customer generation. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. Facebook is yeah so much bigger for that for sure. Yeah. That's so, good. I mean, even if today just helps you with that, that's awesome. Just uh, another question, just leading to what Josh, further what Josh was saying. So, right in here, if I was, a, how do I say, when we were engaged in social media, like had my like guys were doing social, like similar to what Josh does, putting the reels in, Insta, putting the nice music on, all that crap, and then feed into the Facebook. Like hearing to you what you said today, is it worth going through Facebook, put the live stories on that, and then feed it back to Instagram. Is that way is that a possibility or yeah, look, yeah, look, you can 100 percent Yes. Um, 
in saying that with the stories, they the stories are very much the same on Facebook and Instagram. So it doesn't really matter which way it goes. If it's a story, um, if it's reels, you literally can download it. Oh, a reels, you can do a reel on Instagram and just feed it to Facebook. That's mm -hmm. fine. It's only the tiles that become an issue because the tiles generally have 17, seven to 14 hashtags and they don't work on, on Facebook. So it's, it's mostly the posts that are on issue with Instagram. The reels, yes, your Instagram reels will just go straight to Facebook. Your stories will just go straight to Facebook. Having them both there is fine, absolutely fine. But that's going to be the one thing. Remember what I said, branding and visibility? Yeah. Lead generation, you've got to do that second part, is the outreach stuff, putting yourself in front of your ideal customer. Joint collaborations and referral partners are really important as well. So, for example, I had a, a mechanic. And he has air conditioning, a car air conditioning company. The mechanic doesn't do car air conditioning. The car air conditioning company doesn't do mechanics. They do content on each other's pages once per week and tag each other. You're now putting each other in front of each other's audi audience. So joint collaborations awesome. work really well. As I well. must say. I, my brain is in agony from the amount of content. <laughs> Sorry, oh Bill. I, I, can't even, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Did you learn anything? Too much. <laughs> I'm gonna have okay, to make my so wife watch this whole thing because after we after we have a after we have a break, so you're gonna have half an hour to un un Wind. fire your brain. And then we're going to come back and we're going to discuss discuss like the niche niches. So Chantel really um, hit upon who's using Instagram, who's using Facebook, who is your customer and where are they hanging out? And that's going to help refine some of the marketing ideas that we were discussing before Chantel jumped on as well. So you might even rechange what you thought this morning to now going into a different direction. Yeah, because I've, I've got two full pages of action steps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so eighty steps. So here's the thing: um, when I work with somebody to do this, it is an eight week process. Okay, so I've given you an overview of eight weeks worth of mm. work. So I'm glad you've got two sheets of paper because <laughs> it would take you eight weeks to do it. Yeah, and I guess it just becomes force of habit. Like it's not actually that hard once you learn the ins and outs of yeah. it. Like yep. We're all pretty tech savvy these days. I think yep. once you start, like you said, the 20 minutes a day, I really like the idea of that um, that Excel spreadsheet with all the Facebook links and the days that you can post. That's, that's absolutely awesome. So another thing to do um, with that is Excel spreadsheet, same thing, have referral partners. Referral yep. partners on there as well. So you remember every single week to go like and comment on their stuff on both Instagram yep. and Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Add that to your spreadsheet. So I've given you strategies worth of, you know, eight weeks. It would take me eight weeks of working one-on-one -on -one with you to be able to do, to set this all up and do it. All right. Yep. I offer a free 30 minute call, which is on my website. From there, I will, I will say to you, like, do, do you want to move ahead and go into the eight week program or not? I also have a five-month program. My five-month program goes into email marketing and building your database and building your leads as my five-month program, okay? Regardless, you don't have to buy anything from me. Um, you can just book that 30-minute session with me and I can answer any of your questions. Awesome. I mean, I think a great thing for me to do would be because um, my wife does all my social media. Um, yep. So I think once uh, you send this through to Chantal, if they pass it over, um, I'll get her to watch all of this and then probably book something where we can be both uh, be present. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And Excellent. I can handle all of it to her. <laughs> I, um, I train a lot of wives, heaps and heaps of wives. Um, and having that Trello board is really good because if you're out on the field, loading it onto Trello, she can pick it up while she's behind the desk and be able to um, sort out the socials. Yep, and you now yep. have a strategy. I have been told that I help co I help husbands and wives sleep in the same bed together again after working with me. Um, yeah. <laughs> because the wives are trying so hard to, to do it, but they really are flying blind. They're not yeah. marketers. They've got no idea, but they seriously want the best for you in the business but they just need help. I trained heaps of wives. 
That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, the, the part about sleeping in the same bed again, yes. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm freshly married. I'm still fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me help you keep it fresh. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to go because it's my daughter's birthday. She's already starting to set up her stuff. And um, But thank you so much. And um, you have all my deets. So um, I look forward to connecting with you again and enjoy the rest of your Saturday training. Awesome. Thanks, Chantel. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Chantel. Yeah.